Hello boys and girls, I'm Andy Murray from WhatCulture.com And I'm Adam Nicholas from WhatCulture.com And we are here with a fresh news delivery without Adam Wilborn for a change But don't worry, we still got his catchphrase It's the news! Oh, almost like that was just off slightly Just, just a little, little bit, bit. Let's try it again, try it again Okay, okay, okay This is the news! That's the one! Is that good? Much there better, you go, much man. better You angling for a full time role here? I'm trying, I don't want to tell him Trying to angle him out of the whole thing. Hush. Not even like he's hush. good at the job or anything, is he? Doesn't even do any homework or anything. Yeah, he's very average. Shocking. I'm not ashamed of him. Anyway, <laughs> story number be. one. I probably should be. <laughs> um, a certain WWE wrestler got himself arrested the other day. Oh, ooh, this is Adam Wilborn. Yeah, unfortunately was Hence not. Hence the reason he's not here today. Hey, he's under <laughs> Mars. Jimmy Uso <gasps> got himself into a spot of bother oh, yeah. in Detroit the other day. So this story was broken by TMZ of all sources in the world. Apparently, him and Naomi were up in Detroit. Naomi was driving a car. She was driving up a one-way street in the wrong direction. Not Ooh. good. So the police understandably pulled them over. But when the police approach the car, they're uh, smelling a little bit of the old alcohol. Oh, a little bit of the old Oh, uh, well, yeah. maybe. You never know. Um, allegedly. 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 So they obviously ask Naomi to leave the vehicle. Mm -hmm. They've got to do an inspection. Now, Jimmy apparently gets all fired up. He takes off his shirt and his jacket. He's squaring up. He's ready to fight. <laughs> Cop pulls out a taser. Cop's feeling very worried. Mm -hmm. Here's this big burly wrestler getting in my face. Uh, fortunately, Jimmy complies. He does get handcuffed. He does get taken to jail. Mm -hmm. He is released after uh, putting up a bond. So he's out. Everything seems to be okay. WWE have released a statement on this matter saying that Jonathan Fatu is responsible for his own personal wow. actions. Very standoffish, very cold. Adam Nicholas, what do you think of all this? I think that sounds like they want nothing to do with that at all, <laughs> yeah. WWE. He's his own man. <laughs> sort him that out. Sounds um, like a him problem. It sounds like this escalated really quickly yeah. out of nothing. Um, I, I do wonder if his over-the-top reaction is perhaps suggesting maybe something was awry, because why would he... I don't know. Why would you? Weird. Why would you kick off in such a manner, taking yeah. your top off as well, in front of a <laughs> yeah. police person who clearly has a taser <laughs> and means of putting you in jail? Exactly. It's probably not the best move. I mean, even a even a normal person who isn't a wrestler could probably come up with that. Someone who's been trained to deal with media, etc., surely understands this kind yeah. of thing. Like, oh yeah, don't aggravate the police <laughs> yeah. at all. Maybe don't, don't get don't square up. I believe that was the exact quote. He squared up squared to the police up, as, so. as if he wanted to fight. Bit of a bizarre move, although the mental image of him just whipping his top off and going, right, you buggers. Now, if someone said it was Andy Murray taking his top off and squaring up a police officer, completely Regular legit. Regular weekend I understand occurrence. that, but Jimmy, I don't know what he's got to gain here. I really don't understand I don't that. either. And then, um, obviously, his brother, Jay, was arrested for a DWI last January, and oh, yeah. WWE released the yeah. exact same statement. Uh, he is responsible for his own mm. personal actions. That didn't work. That didn't result in any kind of decreased nope. push for, uh, for Mr. J, but with Jimmy wrestling Shane McMahon and The Miz for the SmackDown Tag Team Champions mm. this weekend, you have to wonder if that will play into the match result. Perhaps. Yeah, the timing's not amazing, I have to say, but, but in fairness, they managed to get over the last one, so hopefully there'll be some resolution to this one. Speaking of tag teams, Andy Murray, oh. The Revival oh. have been doing a bit of a, well, they've been working themselves a little bit. They're, they're kind of trying to introduce the old tag team titles. Basically, we've seen them on social media, lots of pictures of them with the old school WWE yeah. tag belts on, and as we know the revival are oh, very old school indeed. No flips. Go on. Just fists, oh, isn't it? I messed what's that even up. the point of taking? Yeah, Let's try again. Yeah, no yeah. flips. This is the news. There you there go. There we go. We at least take a little pull the string <laughs> in your back kind of thing. But yeah, Dash Wilder has been trying to promote them using the old tag belts. Andy Murray, compared to the new current tag belts, what do you think of this? They're beautiful, aren't they? The old like, ones have got that real vintage regal sort of look about them, haven't they? Absolutely. Particularly the photo that Dash tweeted on, I think it was Wednesday, of the close-up mm. shot, the belt, the nice silver yeah. plates, the purple strap. But obviously, you know, this is a belt similar to those we saw in the 80s and 90s. Obviously, it doesn't have WWF logos. Mm. It's all WWE. I imagine all the ones with the WWF logos are probably falling apart by now. It'd be nice to see them go back, I think, to belts that actually look like title belts. Yes. As in, like... What you'd see in, or maybe boxing's maybe not a great example, but what you'd see in big professional proper sports sure. where the belts look regal, the belts look like they've got a bit of sort of, what's the word I'm looking bit for? Prestige. Bit of prestige. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Like, yeah, all of the NXT UK titles, 
Wonderful. Yes, oh, absolutely. Like some of the NXT ones. Lovely. Why can't we just find the person who's doing them belts and get them to do... And do them on the main roster. But to be fair, throw back to the old belt would be quite nice Yeah, it would. And it would kind of fit with the Revival's whole aesthetic. Their team name is the Revival. You know? Exactly. I mean, they're basically... They're a real throwback in the way they wrestle, in the way they present themselves in absolutely everything. Mm. And I think it would be in keeping with everything they're trying to do. Um, it would be really cool for WWE to pull this. It would kind of show that maybe they are actually serious, as has been rumoured, about presenting tag team wrestling. Mm. But there's also the possibility that they're only doing these nice things to stop them from leaving. Them from leaving. But so. as well, they might as well cash in on that now. If they, can get, mm -hmm. if they can get them to do these things to make sure they don't leave for another company, then why not do just that? Daniel Bryan managed to achieve it with his belt. Why yeah. not the revival? Absolutely. And they're not going to try and smoke that belt. Either. <laughs> you going to smoke that belt? Hey, well, goddamn, can't put the belt in the bin. So... <laughs> From one, uh, I don't really know a segue for this, from on. one really good there, there. wrestler. Segue. Hey, there, there we are. go, bang, bang. Just, just, if it doesn't fit, just, yeah. just yeah. Have I ever told you a story about the guy who invented the segue? Oh, come on then. Died by driving a segue off a cliff. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of going off a cliff, there it is, Seth Rollins. <clears throat> He's injured at the moment, as we already know. He has been uh, he's been pulled from house shows. He's not competing on Raw. Mm. He's not going to have any matches for a while. Yep. But he is on TV, cutting promos, doing other non-physical angles. So Dave Meltzer has an update on his condition in this week's Wrestling Observer Excellent. newsletter, and. It's not too substantial, but basically they knew before the Royal Rumble that Seth was working hurt. They knew ahead of time that he was going to need to take some time off. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what he's doing. The thought process is that he could technically wrestle at the moment, like he could get through it, but WWE wants him to be in 100% or as close to 100% as possible physical condition for that big WrestleMania match with Brock Lesnar. So the main event you mean? The main event, you reckon? I, I, can you imagine if they I did that? Imagine can you imagine? Yes, I can imagine it. I can imagine it well. I know who Vince McMahon is. I've seen it a million times. And if they did that, you can guarantee he'd put Brock over just to yep, piss just, everyone just off. Just to as really well. get the goal. <laughs> this is interesting for me because obviously Rollins, when he got that knee injury back before Mania 32, that was really unfortunate. And I know he's had plenty to come back since and put on some great show and since. Mm -hmm. But with it being such a big match at WrestleMania, it's nice to see they're being smart about it yes. and just saying, okay, we don't actually need him. To be wrestling but he is featuring in promos and doing bits where maybe he's not so much physical contact but he is still present on the tv and the fans still get to see him yeah absolutely it gives them a chance to build up to that program you know brock's not going to be there every mm. week if you kind of had seth never there as well that would be a problem yeah. for what would be one of your big ticket selling <laughs> ticket selling matches but no it is you're absolutely right mm. it's nice to see them kind of putting the performers health first because this is a company with a, a brutal road schedule and um, a style that is supposed to be safe yet yields more injuries than any other promotion in the world. It's just so, so busy though, isn't it? Like it is. the amount of live shows they have to do every week, also TV every week. The it's traveling, it's, the lack it's of recovery. Just, it's typical as well, as if you're building to a big pay-per-view or something like that, there's always an injury of something to, of some degree comes in mm -hmm. and tends to cause a problem. But I wonder what Vince McMahon is thinking about all of this because this is the second time now he's had Seth angling towards the main spot yeah. and injuries have started to crop up. Is that something that you might end up holding against him? I think it might be. It would be a very Vince McMahon move. Mm. And I, I'm almost certain that Finn Balor's injury uh, when he was wrestling Seth at SummerSlam 2016 mm -hmm. is a big part of the reason why it yeah. took so long for Finn to get back to the top. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see. I certainly hope not. Very talented wrestler and a guy a lot of people want to see succeed at the top Absolutely. of the card. But speaking of WrestleMania 35... 35. 35! I was going to say 36 there, but speaking <laughs> of WrestleMania 35 and matches that could potentially happen there, we've got a little bit more of an update on Dave Batista, who apparently has said that he has no intention of wrestling anywhere else, wants to wrestle with WWE, mm -hmm. and could potentially still be on for a match at WrestleMania 35. Now, that hasn't been confirmed, and nothing locked in specifically yet. A lot of people talking about a potential match against Triple H, but he hasn't ruled out the card. So it's one of these where it's not on the table, it's not off the table, but it's certainly a conversation they could be having. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Big Dave, in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, how do we update on Big Dave? <laughs> Reckons he met with... Uh, Dave on Dave. Dave on Dave <laughs> action, baby. That's oh, what yeah. we're here for. Um, he reckons that WWE and Batista met on the 7th of February. Batista also met with Chris Jericho mm -hmm. regarding AEW yes. on the 12th. However, it seems he's not interested. He mm. only, if he comes back, he only wants to wrestle for WWE. The Triple H situation is interesting. That man has recovered remarkably quick from yeah. a torn peck. You sound surprised though. This is Triple H. He's, he's Lazarus. He's an absolute monster. He's basically Lazarus. Yeah. He's a freak. Um, but... WWE apparently don't know if Triple H is actually going to be ready for WrestleMania. Mm. If he's not, you'd think maybe Randy Orton might make a good opponent. Safe pair of hands. Yeah. They obviously have history. They had great chemistry in that Evolution mm -hmm. uh, segment on SmackDown 1000. Yeah. 
So it's, it's an interesting situation. I'd really like to see Dave get one last match. Like, I'm not sure it would be any kind of technical classic, mm -hmm. but he just seems like a really nice guy and I want him to do well. What would you say about potentially, thinking about the history of Daniel Bryan, what about Dave Batista, Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania? Because obviously that was that triple threat match with yeah. the three of them, Bryan ended up winning. Batista was very heavily involved in the build up to that mm -hmm. match as well. Not sure it's one I'm, I don't know, for me personally, I'm not sure it's one I'd really want to see, but it's yeah. certainly a match I could see Vince McMahon booking. Yeah. Like a baby face yeah. Batista against Daniel Bryan for the title, obviously, Bryan being a massive heel. Yeah, it could absolutely work, and they don't really have an obvious opponent for Bryan. Not at the, at the moment. There's nobody some... really standing yeah, out. Yeah, it's something like the same with Asuka. Like, these programs have kind of been lost in the shuffle with everything that's going on on Raw. It's a shame. I'm sure they'll come up with something great for Daniel because they always do at this stage, but. Dave Batista versus Asuka, however, is a match. <laughs> I would absolutely watch. Book and if you are up. watching, Vince, because we know you are, we know you're yeah. paying attention, <laughs> hey, why not just book it? If you want to do in agenda, there's your, yeah. there's your match right there. Dave Batista versus Ask. We don't want, definitely not happening. We don't want Nia Jax versus Dean Ambrose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why do we want that? Exactly. When you can get Dean Ambrose against EC3. <laughs> the match that everybody wants. Of Five course. stars in the Tokyo <laughs> Dome. So let's take it wow. over to the QA community okay. for a short the while. QA we have community. A nice selection of questions yep. from you, the Twitter <laughs> audience. Well, you're the YouTube audience, but you know what I mean. Uh, the first one comes from David Rotten, who asks <laughs> Good name, I like it. <laughs> Son of Johnny? It might be. Quite possibly. It might be. Do you think we will see the winner of the women's tag team titles this Sunday go on to face either Trish and Lita or the Bellas at WrestleMania 35? Ooh, that's an interesting question because that, I hadn't even considered that, but that feels like two teams, uh, Trish and Lita and the mm. Bellas, that Vince would be all over putting in a match at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. I, <clears throat> however, don't think that's going to happen. I think we're probably going to get a heel win at uh, Elimination Chamber, most likely Tamina or Nia Jack, uh, Tamina and Nia Jax rather, <laughs> well, or Mandy and Sonya would be my personal pick. That'd be fun. And then I think Sasha and Bailey surely have to get that moment. You think so? They've had a bit of a rough spell. They've been kind of put on the sidelines to give them that big moment of winning the women's tag belt at WrestleMania. Surely that's on the cards. Yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, mm. that is the story. You yeah. have the heels. Maybe they play Sasha's injury into it. The heels take advantage yeah. of that. They win the belts. Everyone's angry. Loads of people will be angry if Tamina and Nia Jax win, but they're heels. You're supposed to be angry at them. It's uh, fine. And surely cash in now while that's hot because exactly. they are being booed massively. So exactly. I can't see why they wouldn't do it. The one thing I would say is we all thought Sasha and Bailey were going to have a nice long rivalry. And that never happened, did it really? Yeah. Like we never got that payoff, we never got the big match. So just because it's obvious doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen. No. Exactly. But uh, to wrap that one up, I could absolutely see the Bellas and Trish and Lee mm. getting title shots at some point. It'd yes. be a lot of fun. It'd be a lot of fun. So uh, Kruger asks, Kruger, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, brother. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on Shelton ben Benjamin? Amazing talent, but failing as a tag team now, barely mm. even appearing on TV. Mm -hmm. How would you book him? I don't know. <laughs> out, out of the company? Oh, uh, man. I don't mean that in a nasty way. I just mean I feel like Shelton Benjamin is so talented that he could... He, he's not being used, is he? They're no, not. he barely he, makes He came TV. back, and to be honest, I was uh, interested to see what they were going to do with him. He's obviously much older than he used to yep. be, and but the guy can still go. He yep. still has the he's talent. Still very good. Um, but I just think he surely is one of many. I don't know how long his deal that he signed with WWE is, mm -hmm. but he must be one of them who's looking and thinking maybe a future elsewhere yeah. might, be, might be beneficial. Because realistically, a, a key could go to another company, and I would have him as someone's champion. Like, yeah. he's putting him in a tag team with Chad Gable while in a dream world before he even came back that might have been really exciting if you'd had maybe still had American Alpha together and then added him yeah. as some sort of manager or whatever the flip reverse of the role that mm -hmm. he played in Team Angle that would have been good but we haven't really seen them utilise him at all yeah me. he hasn't really done anything for a while it looked like perhaps he was going to become like this mid-card gatekeeper heel mm. who young baby faces on their way to the top would beat but SmackDown doesn't really use that role anymore. No. They do have gatekeepers, but it's guys like Samoa Joe and even guys like Randy Orton who are just kind of below main event level. I don't know if he can position mm. uh, Shelton on that level. I still think he's very good. Um, I just don't know if he's ever going to be a feature performer. And maybe, you know, he's probably got one last big payday. And mm. maybe if uh, he's fed up with his situation, mm. AEW would surely sprinkle a little dollar his way. If he's not fed up with the situation and he's just happy being part of the machine and kind of helping the younger guys and getting to wrestle against the up and coming talent, NXT maybe. Would, Great. That, would yeah. you like to see him in there? Just maybe, just as you say, a gatekeeper in there. Similar to what uh, Cassius Ono is doing right now. Yeah. Very, it, it works. I mean, they need those guys down. They do, NXT. they do. They need a few veteran 
pair of hands to help these younger guys come through and I think that's an excellent idea. Have him on house shows working with younger trainees, guys who don't have so much experience, mm. like maybe our man, Big Eric Bugenhagen, yeah, the Stacey maybe. Irvin Juniors, oh, these there. kind of people. Yeah help them kind of evolve their fundamentals to WWE level. It's a good idea, well done. I would like to say also, just to point out, either one TLC ladder match or Money in the Bank, do put them in there, have them do some mad spots. If that is one last one song, yeah. let's get that. Let do some flips, well. Definitely. Last question uh, from Noah Grutel Hoyt, mm -hmm. who asks, the whole angle with Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin is getting a little tiresome, in my personal opinion, completely agree. Yes. Uh, once it's over, do you think that we could see these wrestlers move into feuds that would elevate them and be entertaining for all of us. Um, for Braun, yeah. Mm -hmm. For Baron, I love Baron Corbin. Big, I have to say, Probably maybe not, two big fans of Baron Corbin. Yeah, yeah. Very I love underrated it. in my it. opinion. I know people are gonna say his matches are boring, etc. His matches aren't supposed to be interesting. Yeah. He's the heel. He's the heel, God, the damn point. Like... God damn it. <laughs> but yes, Mike, Michael Sidgwick will tell you, the rest holds and headlocks do not make a match, and he's not wrong, I suppose, to yeah. a certain degree. Yeah, he's not like a five-star worker, but no. I love the kind of corporate stooge mm. character. I think he's really yeah. good at playing it, and I really hate him when he's on screen. Mm. So, Corbin, I, I say no, because WWE just will probably put him in a feud with, I don't know, Goober number five, mm. and they'll, they'll go 50-50, and it'll be really boring. But they do at least put some care into Braun, and, yeah. you know, it's kind of weird that they're wrestling again, this weekend. But. It feels like it took a massive sort of detour from it yeah. and then have come back to it now. Um, I think I'm the same with you. I think Braun Strowman definitely has a big future. Like, if they just play it right, I know Heat's died down with him recently. The excitement around him is sort of yeah. distilled a little, but I still think Braun's got a huge future and I'm not sure who exactly would get him in that to put him against to kind of get the best out of yeah. him. But in terms of Baron Corbin, there's a capable guy there who can be a top heel if you just give him the chance. I think that after the corporate stuff, where does he go from there? Does he? He's still wearing all the gear, and he's not really the corporate stooge anymore. So yeah, it's kind of weird. He looks like maybe me at a re wedding. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he actually does. <laughs> Phil, we're going to get the picture, and we're going to put that picture hey, oh, on the wedding. Can't wait. Right next to that, it's exactly <laughs> the same. But yeah, I'd love to see Corbin get a push in some way, shape, or form. Definitely. Yeah, me too. Let's see him do something interesting. Yeah. And finally, uh, you've actually got an ad finally. I do. Oh, he's got an ad finally. Tamatonga <gasps> sucks. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for joining us. We've been more culture. We have been more culture. No, no, no. Come on now. Come on now. That's. I mean, he does. I mean, he does. Tam. Well, point to you, Tam, my son. Yeah. You, you suck. And also, you can't just keep coming on our videos and just dropping in whenever you yeah. goddamn feel yeah. like it. For anybody who has no idea what we're talking about, would you want to shine a little light on that? Yeah, the man. I don't know, man. Obviously, earlier in this year, he was talking all kinds of smack Call on the smack. great men TM. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I believe he was threatening to to come to the England. And then come, to the, come to the England and slap us up. But I don't see him anywhere. Not Eva yet. Marie with a lucha mask is over there. Phil, do you see him? Hulk Hogan's there. Him all, no, I don't see him anywhere. A lot of talk. Goddamn oh. Cobra's here. <laughs> Tamatonga's not. <laughs> what was that, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. Oh, hey. No, no, we should say, if you want to see what we're talking about, there is a video kicking around. Phil, what was the what was the why they decided to invade? Uh, why the Bullet Club is still not fine. Why the Bullet Club is still not fine, of course. There'll, there'll be a link. There'll be a link somewhere. Little linky, linky boo somewhere. Maybe yeah. so. But go and watch that. Check it out because you can't just have this man shooting all over yeah. pop culture. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Terrible. Behavior. Terrible. We'll behavior. send Adam Wilborn after you. Oh, maybe and then you'll be in real big trouble. Oh maybe God. that's what he's doing. Yeah. The hound went after the. The hound went for it. <laughs> <laughs> after the what? The <laughs> went after the bad boy. <laughs> The good bad. Boy. Yeah, sorry. The the, oh, he's not good anymore. Yeah, he knows Whatever that, he is, you're he's a boy. He's all over the place. He's, he's certainly a boy. He's a boy. Anyway, anyway, thanks for joining us. I've been Andy Murray. And I've been Adam Nicholas. You can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Mm -hmm. If you're so that way inclined, you can follow me on Twitter at Andy H. Murray. You can follow me on Twitter at It's Adam Nicholas. And you can follow our wonderful editor, the man behind the lens, Phil My Chambers. At, at Phil My Chambers. <laughs> Mess that up. That's his full name. Up, his <laughs> name is Phil. <laughs> My Please. chambers. <laughs> That's all he wanted. He's asking for the thing anyway. And we're going to go and fill his chambers right now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Don't fill Phil's chambers. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> <laughs>